Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'll be describing how I made this game Wario Snake for the Super Nintendo. Stay tuned. Nearly every game I've made it starts with the graphics. The graphics make the game. So here what we're viewing is two different tile sets in Photoshop. The top tile set is used to lay out the levels and the snake head. The bottom tile set is obviously Wario. He rides on top of the snake. There's eight versions of the top tile set. I won't show them here, but they're used so we can extract the color palettes for the varying colors across the eight levels. Next, let's have a look at how we lay out the levels. We, I've got a program open here called Tiled. It's freely available on the internet. Uh, the developer also accepts donations to help with the development of the software. So I've got three levels open. This is the first level and it has two layers, a map layer and a collision layer. At the right hand at the bottom we've got the we've got the tiles that I've imported from Photoshop here so in tile you can take each individual element and draw it across the screen and if we hide the top map layer we'll see we've got another layer which is the collision layer this is used in the program to figure out where the snake can and cannot go as you can see for the second map, the collision will look different. You can also see that the colors are different from the first map. This is, like I said before, we've got eight versions of the same tile set, but with different colors. Uh, and so we extract the palettes from each of those images. Once we've exported our files from tiled, this is the output that we receive. I've exported the comma separated value file, a CSV file. This is for the first level. Each individual item represents one grid item on the screen. Now let me show you how I take these items and import them into a format Super Nintendo understands. Okay, let's have a look at the two programs I've made to help with the conversion of CSV files into formats for the SNES. The first one, if we go into the data directory, is called CSV to map. And the input for CSV to map is obviously the output from the program. So, let's type that in. This is the CSV file. Once we hit return, we see it successfully created a dot map file. These dot map files are the standard way in displaying backgrounds on the SNES. The next file we're going to convert is uh, the collision file. This one is called CSV to collision. It's another executable. And as the import, we give it the collision file. CSV. That's created the .col file. You can have a look at the source code to see how I handle this, but basically the .col file is just a binary file representation of the CSV. Now let's have a look how we import those files into our assembler code. In a file labeled data.asm, the link will be available in the description of the video. We've got a bunch of labels on the left hand side. The labels call an ink bin command, which then we provide a path to the actual file we want to include in our assembly source code. We can see here we've got the map files, the col files, the pal files, and the pix files. These are all included into the final binary once the assembler has finished assembling. Now let's have a look at the macros that we use to upload data into the memory of the SNES. The 
if we go into a file named snes.sm, we will see a bunch of methods or macros that include copying data into various locations of the Super Nintendo. The one I've highlighted is to copy into the VRAM. There's also a copy CG RAM macro. These macros accept a source, a destination, a size, and a bank. If we go back into data.sm, we will see segment, read-only data 1, that's a particular bank, read-only data 2, that's another bank, and read-only data 3, that's another bank. So when we pass this information for the bank, it knows how to locate that particular data. If we go into the main, we will see how we're using those particular macros. We're saying SNES copy VRAM level tiles into this particular PPU address. We're giving the size and we're giving the bank number. We're doing the same for the pallets. We're calling the map create macro, which we pass the label of the actual map and the bank number. We're creating the collision files. We're loading them actually into, into RAM. We're giving the label which we want to load and the bank in which the collision file is located. One final note before copying data into different locations of the Super Nintendo. I highly recommend you use the WAI command which waits for the VBlank before copying. This ensures the memory isn't corrupted during the copy. Then we have an, if we scroll down, we have a Wario load. If we go into Wario.asm, we will see the same methods there, the macros, the same macros as before. SNES copy VRAM and SNES copy CG RAM. These load Wario tiles and Wario palettes into their respective locations. One final note about the source code. I've included two assembler files, word.asm and dword.asm. They allow you to perform multiplication and division on the SNES CPU. The SNES CPU by itself cannot perform these, so I've written macros to help with long division and multiplication on the actual CPU using just addition and subtraction and shifting. If you're planning to make a game of your own, I highly recommend you copy these files into your own project. They will save you a lot of time. So that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll catch you on the next video.